Welcome third graders to another session in reading. Today I'm coming to you from room 102. Yay! All right, so before we get started, I want you to think about something in this past week that has been tricky. I think on Friday, a lot of you had to get a quick refresher on Google Slides. And some of you had used it in the past, some of you hadn't used it in a while, some of you it was brand new for you. And some of those things were tricky to do, like adding a picture or adding a new slide. So your teacher gave you some instructions on how to use it. And as you started, what happened when you got stuck? Say you wanted to add a picture. I don't remember how to do it, where to go. There's a lot on that screen. I'm guessing some of you asked a friend or a neighbor or everyone's got a couple kids in their class that are just super good at computers, that would be my go-to. Some of you guys asked your teacher, right? And then some of you guys kind of explored on your own. You kind of pressed some things and everybody eventually figured it out, all right? So those were your strategies in problem solving your Google Slides issue, right? So today I wanna to teach you about what to do when reading gets tricky for you, especially since you're doing a lot of your reading at home and you can't always go up to your teacher's desk. You can't always ask a friend who's doing the same thing with you, right? What do you do when things get tricky? And mystery books especially can be tricky, okay? So while we're working today, I just wanna point out in your yellow book, there is a helpful chart. So we're doing session four today but some of the stuff we would normally do in class, we're gonna pass through that a couple pages and you're gonna see a page that looks like this, okay? You might not have the question mark there. I think I wrote that there for adding extra strategies. And this page gives you a ton of strategies for what to do if you get to a tricky part in your reading, okay? So hold on for these special effects. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, sorry, that's as good as it gets. I hope you weren't too excited. All right, so why do mystery books, why are they more tricky than other books? Well, there's several reasons I think that mystery books can be a little more difficult than regular books. First of all, there are so many characters. You've spent the last couple of days jotting down characters that might be suspects. You've been jotting down motives or reasons that they might have something to do with Wallace Wallace missing. There's just a lot of characters. So I'm gonna put lots of characters. And with lots of characters, any of them can be a suspect. You don't know. Second part of mysteries that can be confusing is just like anybody can be a suspect, anything can be a clue. Maureen Higgins was eating a sandwich. I don't know, could be a clue, could just be a sandwich she was eating. So anything could be a clue. And the last part of mystery books, oops. <laughs> the last part of mystery books that can tend to be a little confusing is that there's a lot of places and a lot of shifts and changes in the time or the place that they are. I'm thinking that's why the author of this book put that map of green lawn in the middle or in the front of the book. So it might help you kind of figure out where they're going to or where different clues are found or where Mr. Wallace was traveling as he came to green lawn. So I'm gonna put changes in time and place, okay? And I'm that's just some of you are thinking, well, when we talk about different places and reading, we don't necessarily call that a place. Do you remember what it is? I feel like Dora the Explorer. Can you say setting? So difference in the time change and in the setting. We'll make it a dot there so it looks to read. All right, so as I read today, I want to keep in mind some of the reasons that mysteries get tricky. I also want to keep in mind some of the strategies to help me when things get tricky, because I'm already thinking there's a lot of suspects and a lot of clues. So here it gives you some strategies. Have you done any of these? 
It says, reread to pick up more clues. I think that's our number one go-to when we get stuck. Wait, let's go back and reread. Sometimes read a little bit more and that'll help you make sense of it. It says, talk to somebody about that part. You don't really have a partner or a classmate here, right? But you could say, hey mom, or if you have a brother or sister, you could read the part to them and be like, what do you think that means? Or what does this word mean? It says it use symbols or color code to keep track of each character. Now that's a good one because as I have all of these characters, if I kept my post-its color coded, right? Some of you, that would be awesome. Some of you would have so many post-its sticking out of your book that might not be a strategy that works for you. So today when we're talking all about strategies, we wanna find the ones that work best for you. What do you already use? What's a new strategy? Um, other things that it mentions on this page is dialogue without tags. Now that wasn't on one of our things, but that can be tricky in any of our reading. What that means is when you have somebody talking, but it doesn't say, said Tommy, or Ruth Rose replied, it just says, well, I wanted to go to the park. Well, me too. Well, I don't wanna go there. I wanna go to the zoo. Why do you wanna go to the zoo? Well, I don't know who's talking. Are those all different people? It's helpful when it gives you that tag. Ruth Rose replied. If they don't, how do you figure that out? There are some strategies right here. All right, it says when the setting switches, pay attention to the setting details. Where are they? Who is there? Where should they be? What is happening? And then the last one, if it just gets really long and you get overwhelmed, talks about maybe after each chapter, just jotting down what happened in that chapter. So there are a lot of strategies here. We don't expect you to know them all or use them all, but we want you to know that when you're stuck, when a book gets tricky, Take action, use a strategy, find a strategy. Don't just keep reading because that's gonna kind of mess up your comprehension. You're gonna lose what's going on. You're gonna miss the mystery. You're not gonna be able to solve it with some of those clues. All right, so as I read today, we're gonna kind of keep in mind some of these strategies and see if any of them might help as we go along. And then you're gonna do the same in your book, okay? So we are on chapter five. So chapter five starts out with Back on Main Street, Dink adjusted his backpack and led the way to the Shangri-La Hotel. I'm already a little bit confused because it's saying back on Main Street. Where were they? This is my rereading strategy. I'm gonna check right back the page before. Each time I start a new chapter or each day, I might just quickly review what I read the day before. Here at the end of chapter four. Oh, they're thanking Mrs. Higgins. Yes, the taxi driver. She said, that she dropped Wallace Wallace off at, at the hotel. Okay, all right. So back on Main Street, Dink adjusted his backpack and led the way to the Shangri-La Hotel. Maureen Higgins said she dropped him off at the hotel last night, he told the others. So that's our next stop. What if she didn't, Josh said, catching up to Dink. What do you mean? I mean, maybe Maureen Higgins wasn't telling the truth. Maybe she kidnapped Wallace Wallace. And she's hiding him in her lunchbox, Ruth Rose added. Very funny, Ruth Rose, Josh said. Maureen Higgins said she drove Wallace Wallace to the hotel. But what if she drove him somewhere else? You could be right, Dink said. That's why we're going to the hotel. With Dink in the lead, the four approached the check-in counter at the hotel lobby. Excuse me, Dink said to the man behind the counter. May we help you? He was the saddest looking man Dink had ever seen. He had a thin, thin black hair and droopy eyebrows. A skinny mustache looked like a sleeping centipede on his lip. The name tag on his suit coat said, Mr. Linkletter. I'm looking for somebody. Mr. Linkletter just stared at Dink. He's supposed to be staying at this hotel, Josh said. The man twitched his mustache at Josh. His name is Wallace Wallace, Dink explained. Can you tell us if he checked in here last night? Mr. Linkletter patted his mustache. Young sir, if we had such a guest, we wouldn't give out any information. We have rules at the Shangri-La, he added in a deep, sad voice. But he's missing, Ruth Rose said. He was supposed to be at the book nook this morning and he never showed up. Dink pulled out the itinerary. See, he was coming here from the airport. The taxi driver said she saw him walk into this lobby. And he's famous, Ruth Rose said. She placed her book on the counter in front of Mr. Linkletter. He wrote this. Sighing, Mr. Linkletter looked down at Ruth Rose. We are quite aware of who Mr. Wallace is, young miss. 
Mr. Linkletter turned his sad eyes back on Dink. He flipped through the hotel register, glanced at it, then quickly shut the book. Yes, Mr. Wallace checked in, he said. He arrived at 8.05. Okay, I'm going to pause for just a second, because I'm already thinking Mr. Linkletter seems like kind of a sketchy guy. Can you agree? Um, not only my bad voice of him, but just the way he talks. We have rules at the Shangri-La, okay? He also, he's twitching his mustache, and he just looks kind of strange. Let me give you that quick. Look at that. He looks worried, right? So now I've got another suspect, okay? I'm hoping that if this was your reading book, you would have went back to your list of suspects listed them on this page, right? Maybe you made a post-it and put it in there. I'm thinking that each time I see him or hear him do something that kind of seems strange or makes him seem like a suspect, I might jot it down on one of my post-its. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see where we are. So he said he arrived at 8.05. That also might be a clue. They're giving a very specific time. Anything might be a clue. He arrived at 8.05. All right, I'm keep that in mind here. He arrived at 8.05. He did? What happened after that? Dink asked. Mr. Linkletter pointed towards a bank of elevators. He went to his room. We offered to have his suitcases carried, but he preferred to do it himself. Have you seen Mr. Wallace yet today? Mavis asked. No, madam, I have not seen him. Mr. Wallace is still in his room. Still in his room? Suddenly, Dink felt relieved. He felt a little foolish, too. Wallace Wallace hadn't been kidnapped after all. He was probably up in his room right now. Can you call him? Dink asked. Mr. Linkletter tapped his fingers on the closed hotel register. He patted his mustache and squinted his eyes. Hmm. That seems a little weird. Especially all of the, the patting his mustache makes me feel like the old hmm, right, with the little mustaches. The way he's squinting his eyes just doesn't seem comfortable with all these questions. Okay, so I'm going to post right there because that would be another clue I might want to write in. All right, he squinted his eyes at Dink. Please, Dink said. We just want to make sure he's okay. Finally, Mr. Linkletter turned around. He stepped a few feet away and he picked up a red telephone. Red, could that have anything to do? I don't know, anything could be a clue. I'm not gonna write that one down though. As soon as his back was turned, Josh grabbed the hotel register. He quickly found yesterday's page. Dink and the others crowded around Josh for a peek. Dink immediately recognized Wallace Wallace's signature scrawled in big loopy letters. He had checked into room 303 at five after eight last night. So there's the 805 again in room 303. Could be a clue. Should I jot it down? I think, so. I think we're really getting to something here. So he stayed in room 303. And he arrived at 8.05. Just like Maureen Higgins had kind of mentioned, she dropped him off there and he went into the lobby. All right, Dink pulled out his letter from Wallace Wallace and compared the two signatures. They were exactly the same. Josh dug his elbow into Dink's side. Look, he whispered. Josh was pointing to the next line in the register. Room 302 had been printed there. Check-in time was 8.15. Someone else checked in right after Wallace Wallace. Wait, so 8.15, 8.05. So let me kind of go over this in my head before I keep reading. Wallace Wallace wrote his name and checked into room 303 at 8.05. At 8.15, somebody checked into room 302. I wonder if it says on the register. Let's see. Ah, uh, the signature there is all smudged, Dink said. I can't read the name. When Mr. Linkletter hung up the phone, Josh shoved the register away. As Mr. Linkletter turned back around, Dink shut the register. He looked up innocently. Uh, is he in his room? Dink asked. I don't know, Mr. Linkletter tapped his fingers on his mustache. There was no answer. But tapping on his mustache. I'm gonna put that in there again. 
maybe that's a nervous habit when people get nervous like you see me messing with my hair sometimes I do that when I have to watch myself videotape some people bite their nails which hopefully they're not doing right now um, people have a lot of nervous habits that they do and I'm wondering if he's nervous and he kind of pats his mustache as he's doing it again all right so there was no answer when he called up to Wallace Wallace's room Tink's stomach dropped his mind erased if Wallace Wallace had checked into his room last night, why hadn't he shown up at the book nook today? And why wasn't he answering his phone? Maybe Wallace Wallace had been kidnapped after all. All right, lots of thoughts while reading today and lots of possible clues. Okay, so as you guys read in your own mystery books today, I want you to think about what parts are you stopping at and having to reread? What parts are standing out as maybe that's a clue? What parts are you wanting to maybe write down? Okay, that's what I want your response to be on today. I want you to be able to tell me a part that is tricky for you. And I want you to tell me what strategy you did to try to kind of get over that hurdle of it. What helped you not be stuck? What helped you figure it out? Now, maybe that was mom or dad because you couldn't figure it out on your own. I'm hoping that you might use some of the strategies in here. If you read today and you really, there was nothing really tricky in your section that you read today, nothing really tripped you up, I bet something might have, but you were just so good at figuring it out that it was hard for you to even identify that that actually was a little bit hard for me to kind of figure out. Then I want you to pick a strategy in here and tell me how that might be helpful for somebody else. So if there were lots of suspects and clues, how might jotting down clues and sorting them later, how might that be helpful for somebody? So uh, below the link that you clicked on for the video, there'll be a suggestion what I'm hoping you can do with your book. And like I said, if you're one of those people where you just couldn't pick out something in your section for today that you read, um, there'll be another one that you can choose from where you can choose just a strategy and hopefully explain how that would be helpful to somebody else or how that might be helpful if you encounter that tricky part. Okay, so overall, when readers get stuck, they take action and they use a strategy. Good luck in your reading today and we're all looking forward to hearing your responses. Bye.